In this video, I'm having a look at RDNA 4 performance on Linux. We're going to take a look at Windows versus Linux on Cache OS. Now, I've taken a look at RDNA 4 a couple of times already, and I will link to the last video where I covered how to get FSR 4 working. Now, how do you get it working? Well, obviously, that video explains it, but the instructions were there on Cache OS in the last release notes. It linked to a forum post, and that had detailed instructions on how to get it working. Um, now, if you do want to get it working on a different operating system, it th the same instructions should work if you use Proton 10-4. Now, I haven't tested it myself, but from the, the, the release notes on that version of Proton, it should work, copying in the same launch parameters uh, for Steam games. Okay, so have a look at that previous video, linked in the description, and that should hopefully get you up and running with FSR 4 in games that support either FSR 3.1 or FSR 4. Now, in this video we're going to take a look at 11 games, and there's going to be 35 different benchmarks across those games. And that's going to include 4K, 1440p, and with and without FSR 4 in the 7 games that support FSR 4 out of the box. Now you can get, you can, can use a mod like OptiScaler to get FSR 4 working in whatever you want, but I'm talking about kind of native support. Now it is a bit of a hack. We're talking about a translation from FP16, which is supported on RDNA 3, um, as it happens. So this hack can actually be made to work on RDNA 3, but it does a translation from FP16 to FP8, I think it is. And uh, um, there might be a little bit of an overhead on that. It's not a huge one, but we'll see how much in the stats. Now, um, I do have my usual charts, so you'll see I do compare uh, across the board here. Um, I will do more kind of uh, selective comparisons using either 4K, 1440p, and with and without FSR4. We'll take a look at that as well. But let's roll the footage and talk through these uh, these results here. And starting with Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, we see a very good experience, 100 FPS type experience here at 1440p Ultra. So there's nothing in it there really. Um, when we do turn on FSR 4, the lead grows a little bit for Windows 11. This is a pattern we'll see repeated where turning on FSR 4 makes a bit of a difference for Windows, uh, more than Linux. Um, now, 4K Ultra native, we see not a lot in it. Again, this is another pattern we'll see where 4K is a, a little bit better on uh, Windows 11. Um, when we turn on FSR 4 performance, that lead grows slightly to sort of 9, 10%. Um, moving on to the next game, Last of Us Part 2. Very good experience on both, but there's a, a decent lead here on Windows 11 um, of 16%. When we turn on FSR 4, just a very slight growth in that lead from 16 up to 19. Um, moving on to 4K, similar story. We'll see that there's a 12% advantage. So there's no big uh, change in the 4K results, which we'll see in other games. Um, but when we turn on FSR 4, again, similar story, that lead grows a little bit for Windows 11. Now moving on to the next game, which is... Oh, hi. Horizon Forbidden West, very little in it here, a very minor advantage for Windows 11 that you'd never notice. So that's fairly typical of the 1440p results we'll see. Um, when we turn on FSR 4, a little bit of a lead for Windows opens up to 7%, nothing in the 1% lows though. Um, when we go to 4K, again, at 1440p there was nothing in it, at 4K just a slight advantage now for Windows, still not very noticeable. And again, when we turn on FSR 4, that grows out slightly to be something a little bit more noticeable, perhaps. And moving on to the next game, we have Space Marine 2. Very little in it, a very slight lead for Linux with 1440p native. And when we turn on FSR 4, um, we see that there's actually an issue here with CPU bottlenecking. Um, it's more pronounced on Cache OS, more pronounced on Linux for some reason. Um, but when we reduce that or, or eliminate that bottleneck at 4K, there's nothing in it. In fact, slightly smoother in Cache OS. But when we introduce FSR 4, one of the rare exceptions where FSR 4 actually makes 
no difference in the, the lead for one versus the other. And it's a very, very similar experience here, uh, a very good experience. Uh, at 1440p in Oblivion Remastered, yes. just a slight lead for Windows 11. When we turn on FSR 4, balance doesn't make an awful lot of difference. 6% uh, deficit for Linux versus Windows. What's this about? When we move to 4K, though, you can see on the right-hand side it's very choppy. Um, Just see you. FPS goes That's way down for some reason. That there's some something choking it there at 4K. Uh, FSR 4, um, that should say FSR 4, it yes. doesn't make much of a difference, but it does make it a little bit more playable. Moving on to Ghost of Shishim at 1440p native. Very little in it, just a minor advantage for Windows 11. And when we bring in FSR 4, um, the lead grows out a bit for Windows 11. Moving on to 4K, we see it with native resolution. Again, slight lead for Windows 11. And when we introduce FSR 4, uh, familiar pattern, the lead grows out just slightly for Windows 11. Moving on to the next game, we've got Ratchet and Clank. This is the last FSR 4 game that we'll show. And we see here actually a, a decent enough lead at 1440p native for Cache OS. When we turn on FSR 4, the lead is still there. It's slightly less, um, but you know, it's very, very playable. At 4K native, we see again, a, a, a nice lead for Cache OS here, and it's a bit smoother uh, as well. And when we introduce FSR 4 at 4K, um, it's actually, th there's nothing to choose between them. It's essentially a tie, okay, which is, uh, you know, very, very impressive on both operating systems. Now moving on to the non-FSR 4 games, we see in Doom the Dark Ages that there's very significant deficits, and that could be down to the built-in ray tracing in this game. You, you have to have ray tracing. Running, there's no choice, and that probably hits RDNA 4 more. Now, in Cyberpunk 27, without ray tracing, uh, a decent lead at 1440p Ultra, 14%, whereas at 4K Ultra, there's a bit of a deficit to uh, Windows 11. Moving on to The Witcher 3, and there's a 12 to 15% deficit across the board, whether it's 1440p or 4K. Still very playable on both, it's just that uh, Windows 11 is going to be a little bit on the, the more responsive side. Uh, in Alan Wake 2, we see very little in it at 1440p, but at 4K, again, that familiar pattern, the lead just stretches out a little bit for Windows 11. Now moving on to the last game, Baldur's Gate 3, and what I'll do is uh, pause it here because we're actually using two different... Uh, uh, APIs we're using Vulkan and DirectX 11. Now we'll see that with uh, Vulkan there's a very slight lead for Windows 11, the overall average FPS, but there's a massive lead in terms of smoothness on the 1% lows for Cache OS. It's very, very significant. Whereas with DirectX 11, whether it's the average FPS or the 1% lows, there's just that little bit of a lead for Windows 11, but, but still very, very playable on both operating systems. So with that, let's move on to the statistics and the charts. And when we throw all of those benchmarks that we just saw in the video footage, when we throw it all in there, we see a deficit of 7% for RDNA 4, or, or at least the 9070XT version of RDNA 4. Um, in most of the games, the, there's you know, it, it swings both ways. There's, you know, 5 to 8% in favor of Linux or 5 to 9% in favor of Windows. Uh, a bit more on the Windows side, but, but there are some outliers. Obviously, I pointed out Oblivion Remastered at 4K being a very big one. Um, the Witcher and The Last of Us 2, um, surprisingly bigger differences of sort of 12 to 18 or 19%. Um, which is, you know, I, I wouldn't have expected it to be that much when you consider some of the other games on this list, um, but it is what it is. Um, but overall, um, a decent uh, showing, I think, compared to the last time I looked at RDNA 4. Last time was more like sort of 10 to 11% here, it's 7%. Okay, so that's 
that's actually quite good. Now let's let's break those down a little bit more and have a look at specifically just 1440p, just 4K, um, FSR4 at 1440p and FSR4 at 4K. And we see that native 1440p is almost uh, a tie across the board between the 1% lows and the average FPS. So you're talking about 1 or 2% at most. Um, so that's that's very encouraging. So if you have a 1440p display, you know, and you're thinking about buying an RDNA 4 card, you know, why not? Um, there'll still be some other issues like your uh, kernel level anti-cheats and perhaps ray tracing performance will be a little bit less. But, you know, by and large, you know, if, if you've been wondering whether it's time to pull the trigger, um, I, I think uh, for 1440p, definitely. Even 4K, that there were a couple of outliers where performance did dip a lot. Okay, but by and large, uh, it wasn't that far off the 1440p difference between Windows 11 and Cache OS. Um, so when we move on to FSR 4, when we turn it on at 1440p, we do see a bit of a dip here. It goes from you know less than 2% of a deficit to an 8% deficit. So there's definitely more of a cost to turning on FSR 4 um, using this particular hacky way of doing it uh, compared to Windows where it's just it just works out of the box. It's supported in the Adrenaline software and so on. Um, when we turn it on at uh, 4K, again, there was a little bit of a cost to it, but not. Um, but I suppose 4K was already choked to a certain extent, so turning on FSR 4 probably alleviated the bottleneck in a couple of games, whatever that bottleneck at 4K is. So it, it didn't uh, introduce that much of a penalty uh, compared to, to Windows. So, um, you know, overall, you're, you're looking at 7%. Slightly better on the one percent lows, um. I I think that's encouraging. Um, looking at the boost that you get from turning on FSR four in purely in terms of uh, frame rate. Obviously, there's a boost in image performance or, or image fidelity versus FSR three, um. But I'm on the fence really at fourteen forty p about whether it's worth it. Um, my FSR four setting was balanced at 1440p and performance at FSR4 uh, at 4K. Uh, so at 4K, you know, you're going from, I think it's 1080p up to 4K um, with performance and you're gaining almost 60% and it's basically the same gain on Windows and Linux of almost 60%. So going from, say, a, a barely acceptable for some people 60 FPS performance up to nearly 100 uh, could be definitely worth it for a lot of people who like lower latency. Whereas going from, say, 60 FPS at 1440p up to 70-something and you're drastically reducing your internal render resolution, um, is it 1080p or 960p, I can't remember which, up to 1440p, um, may not be worth it in that case. Um, I would definitely at fourteen forty p take it on a game by game basis to see what difference it makes to the visual quality and what FPS boost you're getting. So anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, do like and subscribe. Okay, I've got a whole series of Steam OS videos coming up across a huge range of hardware, um, going from everything from older four gigabyte VRAM cards up to you know, the uh, mid-range card up to the 9070 XT using, uh, you know, a couple of different CPUs, uh, a sort of an entry-level 5600 and the 7800 X3D. So, so a good range of combinations of hardware that we'll test out on SteamOS. So that, that should be very interesting. and uh, that Those should be fun videos. So do subscribe to be notified of those. But with that, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope if you've been making a decision about whether to buy a 9060 XT, a 9070 or 9070 XT, and you've been wondering, is it time to pull the trigger and get it? Um, hopefully this helps your decision. Personally, I think it isn't a good time to do it. I think the drivers are in a good enough position to to do it. And uh, um, But, you know, that, that that's up to you, really. Um, I think the drivers will improve over time definitely improve over time so 
Um, I think it won't be that long before we see parity uh, across Linux and Windows in terms of performance. But anyway, that'll do it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope to see you in the next video. And in the meantime, happy gaming.